Hello everyone, my name is Yasin and today I will present Jira. Grab a coffee or a tea and join me. I'll share my screen and show you a small presentation. All right, so what is Jira? So Jira is a web-based platform and as we can see here, it's composed of three different parts. You have the Jira core, and that's the basis of the system. And then you have uh, the first extension and that's called Jira software. And then you have the third ex extension and that's called Jira service management. So uh, Jira service management is previously Jira service desk. These three parts of the Jira platform are available for the cloud as well as for the self-hosted systems. And you can decide which one fits to your needs. Both platforms on the cloud or on the promise, they are a little bit different. So you have different uh, user experience and uh, different features. So there are some stuff that you can do with the on-premise version, which you cannot do with the cloud version and the other way around. All right, what is Jira Core? Jira Core is the basis software of the Jira uh, platform. And with the Jira Core, you have the basic functionality such as user management, account management, access rights management, project configuration, um, and data storage, and so on. Jira Core, you have basically a lot of different roles. So let's start from the left to the right. You have a system administrator. So he's the guy who will install the system system and take care of the update and upgrades as well as security of the system. And then, um, but you need a system admin basically only when you have an on-premise Jira platform. So if you have a cloud Jira platform, you don't really need a lot of system administration and probably a Jira admin would be enough. And same as a system admin who takes care of the system where Jira is running like server, or yeah, the AVS cloud, um, you have a Jira admin. He's the guy who takes care of the governance of the platform. So he will be responsible, for example, to decide which project can be created in Jira and which department should use Jira, which not. Who taking care of the apps that you can install in Jira and uh, probably some, um, so he will, for example, receive a lot of um, requirements from different departments and uh, to, satisfy those requirements, um, you need to install a third party app. Uh, there are, for example, online three, four different apps. So he will be the guy to um, evaluate the apps, test them, um, negotiate with the stakeholders, to at the end decide to install one app to fulfill the requirements and not uh, um, installing all the apps that all the stakeholders want. He will be as well the guy who uh, would help the um, team members to automate some tasks with a bit of scripting. On the project level, you have basically three roles. So you have a project leader who is the responsible for the project from an organizational point of view. And then you have a project admin who's responsible for the local configuration of the project. So he can, for example, rename the project. And then you have a team member who is responsible for uh, the data. So they will be the guys who are creating tickets, updating the information, storing their information there, and probably retrieving some reports and uh, and working with the system. So you should really take care of your team members. And then we have a Jira software. And as I said, Jira software is an extension of Jira core. Previously, Jira software was just an app, a plugin that you install on Jira. So Jira software is basically for teams who works with versions and releases. So if you are a software development team or a product development team, hardware or software, or any other product development uh, that you might need to work in an agile way. So um, you can use Jira software. Jira software is the same as Jira core. So the same roles with the same um, yeah, system requirements. And add to that, you get new features such as boards or uh, the version and release management. In Jira software, you have a three-layer project um, management. So in Jira core, you have tasks and you have subtasks. And in Jira software, you have big tasks. So they're like the top layer of the tasks, like your goals that you want to achieve or the big, big feature. And you break them down 
to stories or tasks. And those stories or tasks can have subtasks. So in Jira software, you have the top level called epic and then the middle level called stories and then the lowest level called subtasks so let's talk now about jira service management jira service management is previously the product named jira service desk from atlassian the product is a standalone application it's independent from jira software and jira core but it makes more sense to um, install Jira service management if you have Jira core, at least I would say Jira core. And the best, of course, if you have Jira software, because then you give all the different teams um, the features that they want so that they can work separately from each other. And you give them as well the opportunity to collaborate together and to speed up the work. And in best situations, you will have Jira core for business teams. Then you have Jira software for software hardware development teams. And then you have um, the Jira service management for customer relationship teams. With Jira service desk, customers can create tickets and they can uh, report, for example, some incidents, ask some questions. Those questions will land um in service desk and your employees will take care of them these employees are called in jira service management agents so you have customers creating tickets agents answering them um and why i said that it's best to have jira service management within your jira core and jira software instance because those agents might not be able to answer all the customer questions. And probably in a lot of cases, they will have to escalate that um, ticket and handle it to the development team so that they can analyze the problem and investigate it. So in Jira service management, you have different features. So you have same as Jira core and Jira software tickets and the same roles. You have a project leader, you have a project admin, you have, of course, a local configuration and a global configuration. You have workflows. You have data that you can store. You can upload attachments, screenshots um, to the tickets. Um, and you have, additionally to that, stuff or features which will help you to um, prioritize those requests from customers, such as using SLAs. So SLAs are just account down timers which will show you, for example, that the ticket should be answered within 30 minutes um, or the ticket should be resolved within, for example, 24 hours, depending on different criteria, depending on your SLAs. In Jira service management, you can have as much as possible of customers. You are not limited. You can have, let's just say, 50 agents and up to, well, I'll just say 500,000 customers. So it doesn't really matter how much customers you have, you pay always the same price, only for your agents. In Jira service management, you have this option to collaborate um, on tickets with other um, employees who are not responsible for the communication with customers. So you have your agents and they're responsible for the communication with the customers. And you have collaborators, they could be product designers, they could be software engineers, um, they could be hardware designers. And um, those, we call them in Jira service management collaborators, and they can work on the Jira service tickets, but they cannot change the data there. So they can comment the data, they can upload some documents, but they won't be able to do more than that. In Jira service management, you have some reports such as the satisfaction report. So once the ticket gets closed, your customer receives an email and they can um, give their feedback, like were they satisfied or not. And after months and months and months of work and getting satisfaction um, feedbacks from the customers, you can create those uh, sort of report and 
probably change some stuff in your process so that the customers get happier. And this is the marketplace. So if you're not, um, if the Jira core, Jira software and Jira services functionalities are not enough and you need more than that, for example, uh, you want to use Jira as a test platform or you want Jira, use Jira as a requirement management tool, or you want to use Jira as a portfolio management tool then you can go to the marketplace and look for the app, install it. There are some apps that are for free and others that are paid. So in the next video, I will show you Jira and compare Jira um, service task software and Jira core. Thank you and see you.